Okay, last one. Here we are. I'm going to actually use your book for this one, and that is because I think it has some really good illustrations. Um, if you want to watch this and then go back and look at your book, you can do that, or you can just watch this. Um, I want to talk to you about air masses. We talked about um, the three types of air masses being Arctic, con um, polar, and then tropical. Arctic, remember, are the really cold winds. Um, this is whenever we have like a big time ice storm. Okay? We're going to end up having um, some Arctic air mass that comes in. Gary England likes to be real dramatic about that. Um, polar air masses are cold air masses, and they can be either maritime. Maritime meaning moisture, okay? Marine, maritime, polar, or continental polar, which means they're, that has to do with where they're formed. So a maritime polar is going to be formed over the ocean from a polar area. A continental polar is going to be formed over land in a polar region. Arctic comes all the way from up here. Remember I told you they're always normally very, very dry and very cold. Okay, Down here are tropical. We've got maritime tropical and continental tropical. Maritime pol tropical tells you it's formed over water in a tropical area, which means the air is warm and moist. Continental tropical formed over land and warm. There's not a lot of land in tropical areas, so most tropical air masses are actually maritime tropical. Okay, so those are the three types of air masses. Now, when we start talking about fronts, when we're talking about weather fronts, okay. This is really important that you understand this and get this because this information you're going to have to use for Module 8. So I want to make sure you really understand this. Remember, cold air masses. Remember, cold air sinks and creates high-pressure areas. Okay? So cold air masses are high-pressure and they push out warm because warm air rises. So this cold air mass, when a cold front comes in, what that means is it's going to move in, push this warm air out, and when it pushes it up, often, not always, but often, it's going to create cumulonimbus clouds. And cumulonimbus clouds are those clouds that we associate with severe storms, okay, like tornadoes and thunderstorms, things like that. Now, when we say cold fronts, we're not always talking about Arctic air masses or polar air masses. We're just simply talking about a pocket of air that is cooler than the pocket of air that it's taking over. Okay? Flip the page. We're going to talk about a warm front. Okay? A warm front, what will happen is a warm front has to be big enough that it can really kind of blanket over and just cover up this cold air mass and flatten it out, okay? When this happens, it usually rains, and it's usually light and steady, okay? And you can kind of see the kind of um, clouds that it's going to form. But this warm air mass is going to be a large air mass, and it just is kind of slow and comes in and pushes this cold air mass out, because remember, cold air doesn't rise, so it has to kind of flatten it out. Okay? Stationary front. Stationary front, which means we've got a warm front and a cold front, and they just are kind of right there. Neither air mass moves. It remains for a long period of time. When we say long period of time, relatively warm fronts and cold fronts are short. We've got short time period, this is going to create um, a little bit longer period, maybe a day or two, when we talk about long. We're not talking about weeks, months, or years, okay? So that's what that is. An occluded front. An occluded front is two air masses that are traveling in the same direction. So you've got a cold air mass and a warm air mass, and they are both traveling in the same direction, What's going to happen is the cold air masses, since they're higher pressure and they're bigger normally, it's going to take over that cold air, that warm air mass. I'm sorry. Okay? 
So the warm air front or the warm air front will turn into a cold front. We'll have some light rain, but these are moving in the same direction. The cold front just normally ends up taking over the, that warm front, but they're more moving in the same direction. The kind of rain or weather you're going to get from this is a slow light rain and then you'll end up with severe weather. Okay, because once that cold front takes over that warm front. When cold fronts take over warm fronts, we normally get severe weather. Okay, but light rain until then. See ya!